Good morning, everyone. Before we start our lesson, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up. We are all in different places, but you are taking good care of us. We just pray, Lord, that you help us even to understand our lesson and to be able to be grateful for all the things that you have made, the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that is around us. Bless us throughout the day and all the days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, class. I hope you had a wonderful week. Our lesson for this morning is Miracle in the Storm. I'm sure you still remember what a miracle is. It's something that only God can do. Only God can do. So we are going to read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, and verse 14 to 19. But I just want you to take note of these verses. Verse 1, 2, and 16. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 16. And God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Did you know that? Yes, I'm sure some of you know that. And the begin in the beginning, there was darkness. Can you imagine? Can you see? What can you see from this picture? You can't even see my face. This is how darkness looked like. The whole place was dark, but God did something. He spoke and we had light. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And then on the fourth day, remember, he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. So in our lesson, we have this little boy, Seth. He was so afraid because it was all dark and there was a storm. And he was with his granddad, but he couldn't see him because it was all dark. And a miracle happened. The clouds moved away and they managed to see the stars and they managed to see the moon and then they could see where they were going. That's when Seth remembered, ah, it's good to thank God for the sun, for the moon, for the stars. I'm sure you too are thankful for these things, aren't you? I am thankful. If there was no light, can you imagine? We, we were not going to see each other. I'm sure you can see me now and you can see everything around you. If there was no sun, the whole place was going to be very, very dark. Just like this. Very, very dark. But it's not the case anymore because God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. I'm sure you can make better a better sun and a better moon and better stars. I just want you to remember that these are great miracles that only God did. And we want to be really thankful for them. So, without the sun, there's no life. Did you know that? That's why we need to be thankful for the sun. All life comes from the sun. Even plants, they need the sun to grow. Did you know that? If there's no sun, there will be no plants. There will be no flowers. I know some of you love flowers. I do. I do love plants as well. There's there are plants all over in my house. I love plants. I love nice gardens. And I know most of you, you like to go to the park. Yes, because there are so many flowers, nice grass. You'll be playing. You enjoy it because we have the sun. And then when we are finished playing and we are all tired, we all want to go home, eat, and sleep. Yeah. Do you know what makes us to sleep? 
because it will be dark. And then when it's dark, we are able to sleep. And then when it's dark, then the moon, which has lesser light, because when it's too bright, you can't really sleep, isn't it? I don't think many people really sleep during the day. No. Unless they are not well or maybe they're just too tired. But we all sleep at night. And the moon will give us enough light for us to be able to see where we are going. And we will also be able to sleep and to rest. And there's also one thing. Did you know that? The moon helps us to have seasons. That's why we have summer. We have winter, spring, autumn. When the sun and the moon, they are moving about, that's how we get to have different seasons. And I'm sure we enjoy different seasons, especially the summer, because most of you, I know, you like playing in the sun. You like going to the park and doing all sorts. And we still like the winter too, because without the winter, did you know that? We have like some fruits like apples. They need the cold for them to actually be nice apples. Did you know that? I'm sure you now know. That's why we should be very thankful for all these things. They might seem to be very far. At times you feel the sun is too far, but we need the sun for us to be able to have life. Also, we need the stars. Have you seen the stars? You need to go out sometimes at night and you really look into the sky. You will see beautiful, beautiful stars, more beautiful than these ones that I've drawn. And the moon, sometimes you see it, sometimes it's a half, sometimes it's a full moon. Without the stars, we can't see where we are going. Remember, that's why Seth was so thankful because when the cloud parted and you could see the North Star, that's when they could see where they were going. So we need the stars at night so we see where we are going. You know, sometimes people will be flying aeroplanes in the, in the sky. They need this, the stars and the moon. So it is very, very important. Yeah, time for our memory verse. How many of you remember our memory verse? It says, the heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. So what we see when we see the sun, the moon, the stars, all these things, they are showing the glory of God. So we are so thankful for all these things. Our key statement is, I will be grateful for the sun, the moon, and the stars. We don't want to forget. We don't want to think, oh, I, I need to see uh, some kind of miracle. It's a, we see miracles every day. Every day we wake up, the sun is up. And then it is there throughout the day. That's a miracle. And then it goes to sleep. And then the moon comes up. The star comes up. All oh, this, there are miracles that we see daily. And we need to really, really thank God for that. Because if it was all dark, you were not going to be able to go to school. You would just be stuck in one place. I don't even think you'll you be living because you need the sun to live. So that's why we are so thankful for the sun. So next time you see the sun, I want you to look at it and say, God, I'm so thankful for the sun. And if you happen to go out at night and you see this, the moon or the stars, you go out and say, I'm so thankful thankful for the moon and the stars. That's what Seth realized when he went to Grandpa and Grandpa prayed with him and then he realized, wow, God is in control of the earth, the universe and everything that he has made is for a reason, is for a purpose. So we need to be grateful for all these things. Thank you so much. Uh, we now want to take note of our activity. Use the color for each number as you color the picture of our world. Tell mommy, daddy, or anyone older than you to help you with it. 
ages 6 to 8, fill in the words on the puzzle about God's creation. Next week's lesson is Lesson 15b, titled, God Made It All. God bless you. Welcome to Answer Class. Happy Sunday to you all. May God bless you. For today's lesson, we are going to learn Lesson 113, titled The Revelation of Christ and Armageddon. The memory verse says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Revelations chapter 1, verses 7. Our Bible text is going to be taken from Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 to 31, and Revelations chapter 19, verses 11 to 21. We are going to read Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. Verses 29, I shall read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Verses 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verses 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. May God bless the reading of his word. So children, there is going to be a battle. A battle means war. The war is going to be between God's armies and Antichrist armies. And this war is going to take place at Armageddon. It has been used as a battlefield, several battles has been fought at this place. Remember in the Bible, the armies of Gideon against the Midianites and also the Israelites against the Canaanites and they won the battles. In our story, we can see Seth and his battalion trying to fight against the Antichrist armies which had ravaged Jerusalem, destroying all parts of Israel and all the population. People were dying, but they couldn't. But thank God that God in heaven was preparing to come down with great armies of heaven dressed in white robes and riding on white horses. The sky was rolled back and there was a very great light that filled the earth as Jesus was descending from heaven as he touched his feet on Mount Olives and every eye shall see him. The armies of Antichrist were slain by the sword of Jesus which proceeded from his mouth. And the battles was over and victory won. And Jesus established his kingdom here on earth for a thousand years. So children, I've got a doll here representing a saint. As you can see, the doll is wearing a white robe. As you can see, the white robe is very white. No stain, no spots. So this robe simplifies the righteousness of saints, which means no sin will enter heaven. So one can wonder, how can I be part of God's army? How can I possess the qualities? Yeah. So all we need to do is we need to ask God to save us from our life of sin, to be sanctified, to be baptized by his Holy Ghost and fire. 
also to live the life free from sin, to be honest, having faith in God, believing in his word, loving God with all of our hearts. So children, today is the day of salvation. We need to seek him while he may be found. So children, thank you for listening. This is the end of our lesson. May God bless you. The activities for today, we are going to do a search word. Look for words and let's see how many you can find. And the next week lesson is lesson 114 titled the millennial reign. And the memory verse is from Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1. Let us pray. Our dear heavenly father, we would like to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the lessons for today. Thank you for the lessons for primary power. May God bless them and also bless the answer class as well. Father, Lord, help us today. Father, Lord, come and save us. Come and sanctify us. Come and baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Father, Lord, we want to be part of God's army. We want to reign with you for a thousand years. Father, Lord, help us, O oh God. Come and cleanse us, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, children. Bye.